Well, Pete and I both went to UNM, and we were in a biology class together. So I remember him sort of as an older student in the biology class, sort of a uh, nice-looking man, or I guess young man at the time, and just that we were in the biology class together, maybe in a lab together. And he usually wore a long, big overcoat, and I would see him around campus, and I knew the fraternity that he belonged to. I knew some of the other people in that fraternity. So I don't have like a real startling kind of uh, picture in my mind, other than he was a very confident, kind of easygoing, nice-looking, not real picky uh, fellow, and I'd like to know him more. When was the first time you thought, boy, this fellow's something special? I, I guess that was maybe more of a gradual type of thing. We went out on a double date, and I thought I was going out with the other fellow and not with Pete. I remember we went to a movie, and we were talking about this the other night. Did he think he was going out with the other gal? But he doesn't remember. But anyway, I do remember that first date. And uh, as for being something special, he liked to talk about ideas, kind of ponder over thoughts and issues, and wasn't gossipy wasn't a very persnickety, didn't complain if things were late or they were early or didn't seem to go right. So we started in dating when I think I was a sophomore and maybe he was, I think maybe I was a freshman or sophomore and he was a junior or senior in college. Was there something early on that you could see, boy, there's something special about this guy? Well, he wasn't like extra funny. He wasn't like... Uh, a real jock in, a, in that, those attractive senses. But he, I did like the way he talked and thought about things. And like I said before, he liked to kind of ramble on about different ideas or circumstances that were going on. So it was not, uh, it was interesting to be with him. Perhaps that's the best way to describe it. Overall, he loves America. He loves the American way of life. And he just feels so good about what this country does and what it stands for that um, you kind of absorb that when you're around him after a while. It, when he first entered politics, we'd been married maybe six, seven, or eight years. And by that time, we had a bundle of kids. So I was sort of in my own world tending little folks and being the feeder and the transportation master of the family. So one night he was supposed to stay home and babysit while I was managing some kind of bridge money raiser for church, my sort of big thing at the time. And I came home and he had asked the girl across the street to babysit and he had gone out and talked with his friends and confirmed that he was going to run for office. So it wasn't like uh, we had long-term plans, oh, one of these days I want to run for office. He was influenced by working downtown, and he was a lawyer, so he would ruminate with other lawyers about problems of the city. He knew what the city council was like. And he decided that he wanted to make some changes if possible. But it wasn't like we had long discussions about uh, this is my future and what do you think about it. It was sort of like, that's what I'm going to do. And I knew he was excited about it. It's better to have an excited spouse that's working than somebody that doesn't like his job. You know, I, I wasn't married to Pete at the time. I knew him. And he was teaching for a year and then decided to go to law school. And we didn't get married until his last year of law school. So even though I knew he was teaching, it wasn't a transition period for me. It was knowing him as a law student. That was a real short campaign. I can't remember it exactly, but it seemed like it might have been 30 to 90 days, like maybe you announce in January and in March you're elected, and shortly thereafter 
you were working, you had the position. So it wasn't a lot of going or whole around the state. It wasn't like uh, going to every event for six months. I did go to some of the events with him, but again, we had the small family, small in age, I mean, and uh, when he transitioned to be on the city commission, again, I had no idea what the city commission entailed. I guess my head was in the sand, I don't know, but they always met on a Monday or Tuesday night. That was a late night, but somehow or other, Pete, because he got, I think, the most votes during that election, was the chairman. And at that time, we didn't have a mayoral system. We had an executive manager in the city. But Pete did an awful lot, and I think other commissioners did too, and they were paid very, very little. So he spent time going to functions or looking over situations or meeting with companies. And we did get quite a few phone calls at home. In fact, I'll just inject here. I admire anybody on the city council or the school board where they're locally elected, and you're just open to any wish or thought that somebody has. It's really admirable, and they never get credit for it. Again, it was sort of a gradual go into something else. I think he found out that he liked being in this sort of leadership, making decisions, coming together with other people to focus on some problem, uh, not tending to lots of details, which as a lawyer he didn't like and probably was not very good at. So he liked the things that it took to be in that role, and it was his best characteristics. So when the opportunity to run for governor came up, uh, I think he was eager to try a new elected position. Uh, during that campaign, again, I did go around the state more and met a variety of people, so it was eye-opening. But again, the governorship, not the campaign, was something like over the rainbow. I had no idea what that would have entailed either. I think he probably did because New Mexico is such a small state that people, no matter where they live in New Mexico, know state legislators pretty much firsthand and they know what the governor does. You probably should ask him. For me, that night after the election was so deflating, we came home and for some reason all the beds were full except for one twin bed. And I remember sleeping in that twin bed and crying. I think that he had had his letdown at the Hilton Hotel when the election results were coming in, and he faced the crowd of folks there that had worked so hard to try to elect him. Uh, he also knew that he hadn't been practicing law himself, so the income was necessary for our family. So I think he sort of was jolted back into, well, i got to go back to work. That, you know, I have no idea what the campaign costs now, looking back. I know on our family, uh, he was not earning money as a lawyer because he was not working that much. And Tom Bonham, his partner, used to say he was the only single man that was supporting eight kids and a wife and a husband. <laughs> but he had settled some kind of large lawsuit, thank heavens, that came effective during that time. 